part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And welcome to another edition of the Reg Eye and Rota podcast powered by MGM Northfield Park. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Free admission and free parking every day at Northfield Park. Go have some fun. And speaking of some fun, Michael Red Guy, the Cleveland Browns, the Walking Wounded, the Cleveland Red Cross, the Cleveland Mash Unit, whatever you want to call them, they had some fun on Thursday night football, national TV audience. The Browns found a way to win over the Denver Broncos. It wasn't pretty. In fact, it was ugly, but an ugly win's better than a pretty loss. 17-14, Reg. And uh, I got to give Kevin Stefanski and the Browns credit, man. Case Keenum at quarterback, Dearness Johnson at running back. Uh, Jarvis Landry was a big boost coming back. Uh, OBJ played hurt and contributed a little bit, but he was there. So you like the gritty effort in that. The defense did what they should do to a bad team, right? They, they held him in check yeah. and they scored just enough points to win. But six, seven weeks from now, Michael, we won't care about the score. You'll just remember that it was a win, right? Bottom line, Kenny, they're uh, they're precious and few in the National Football League, man. And uh, unlike the NBA and MLB, you only get 17 shots. So, you know, when you get that opportunity, you got to take care of it. Ken, on Tuesday, you know, before practice, when I looked at I said, no, wait, come on. There's 20 names on here. Right. 20 that uh, we're not going to participate uh, in practice. And. And uh, so, you know, a couple of those that did decide to go, though, Ken, I, I thought getting Jed Wills back, uh, you know, uh, to augment that run game and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, one of the very best offensive lines in the National Football League at least uh, had it, the ability to look that way, you know, without right. uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, I thought it was vital. And, uh, you know, he probably – didn't have to go, uh, but he did, and that was huge. They didn't get Jack Conklin back, so I, I thought Will's going was tremendous. And and, and you know what, uh, Ken, I think we saw it too that you know we laugh about it a lot and have fun with it about backup quarterbacks in the NFL. Hell, we're not sure that there's 32 quarterbacks that are good enough to be starters in the NFL most years. But uh, Case Keenum showed why that Kevin Stefanski. Um, has so much faith in him, and and basically, I, I'm sure Stefanski with uh, with Andrew Barry, what was it last year? Hey, yeah, go ahead and pay him. Go ahead and pay him the six million dollars because uh, he's worth every penny of it. If he's got to come in and uh, short notice win a football game for us, you're right, not pretty, but he won a football game for him, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, and the part that I liked in this game was how Kevin Stefanski changed his offense to benefit his quarterback. Now, there were, you know, some similar plays in that, but they they didn't take too many deep shots because I don't think Case can, can throw the ball like he used to when he was playing at Houston, right? So uh, I love the fact, I really did. I'm usually a guy that says, win the toss, defer, right? I love that they won the toss last night, okay? And Stefanski said, I want the ball, we want to go down and score, and we want to play from ahead uh, in this contest. And I love that's it. exactly what the Browns did, right? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. And, uh, uh, you know, I uh, got after Stefanski a little bit. And uh, still, I've been, I've been at it on the Twitter this week, Kenny. A lot of people, you know, uh, uh, agreeing with Stefanski. Some agreed with me. But, I mean, again, nah, I, I, you know, just, just to reiterate, I, I'm with you. I like the fact that they took the football. And who knows if they were looking at a fourth and four or more you know, in the red zone, when he right. would have taken that first quarter field goal, which I believe you always should do. Remember, Ken, first quarters I'm talking about, Ken, here. Now. Right, right. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you're never going to go for it, Rick. I didn't say that. I said early in the football game, I want points. Get your team even, right? Get your team Get your team leveled out. Get them involved and then go about your process of winning the game. But anyway – he didn't have to do that because of, uh, you know, they put the damn thing in the end zone right away to uh, to get that 7 nothing lead. But, yes, I think it was vital. Very, very important. Most teams will not, if you win the toss, uh, want the football, right? Most defer. 
So you can have it to start and then see how the game plays out. And you got the football to start the third quarter. Big, big plus and big, uh, you know, momentum builder for them last night. And, uh, yeah, very nice to see that kind of start. Phil, I, I got to believe every Browns fan had to feel real good, Kenny, when uh, put the drive together, 7 nothing. You got Keenum quarterbacking. You have so many missing pieces and parts. was great to get that early lead, and uh, they never lost it, which was even better. Yeah, and that's that scripted drive, right? It's your first drive, so you've worked all week. You've got those 10 to 15 plays scripted out. Reg, they didn't need 10. They didn't need that. They needed five mm-hmm. plays to go 75 yards mm-hmm. and, and put those points on the board with Case Keenum at the helm. And uh, I, let me just say this right right here, okay? Case Keenum is the backup quarterback on this team, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's he, he didn't, in my opinion, play well enough <laughs> Or do I have enough confidence in him that he's going to supplant, uh, you know, Baker Mayfield as the starter when Baker's healthy or if Baker's healthy? If he's yeah. not, okay. Yeah. But he did his job last night as the backup quarterback, which is to go in, not turn the ball over, and not lose the game. And uh, he provided just enough offense, 199 yards, a touchdown pass, no turnovers. Um, the running game was fantastic with D. Ernest in his first ever start for 146 yards and a touchdown. That's a hell of a way, uh, you know, to make a, a splash into the mm-hmm. NFL. Um, but uh, I go back to, to Case Keenum. He did the job of a veteran, good backup quarterback. And that's you need him for two or three games. He's going to come in. He's going to win you two out of three, uh, not really hurt you and, and keep your team afloat. That was his job. And he did his job last. Do your job. That's it. That's right. Exactly. You laid it out perfectly, partner. And that's that's all you're looking for. And remember now, uh, you know, Kevin Stefanski and Case Keenum were together yep. with the Minnesota Vikings. And and, and Stefanski, uh, you know, was uh, the play caller there. And Keenum was the starter on that 2017 Vikings football team that got into the playoffs. So um, I, I think their relationship is uh, real strong, Ken. And uh, you know, you you know what? There's something to be said for that, especially with your backup quarterback. Um, I, I do think it helps. Normally, I'm not a guy that, you know, but I do think the uh, connect with Stefanski and Keenum helps in this case. Case knows he's not going to, uh, you know, become the starter on this football team. And, right. and he's fine with that. Now, they're paying him very, very well, very, very well to hold that clipboard and make sure. But. Uh, things don't, uh, you know, run amok. But, Ken, you were alluding to it, and that's the bottom line. What you're looking for in, in your backup quarterback, you just can't have the whole thing go to hell, you know? And we've seen that a lot, right? Yeah. A backup will come in and the offense just completely cannot function, can't operate, uh, you know, can't even uh, dream about getting the uh, drives together and putting touchdowns together. So, He's not that way, and I think the connect between Stefanski and Keenum, as long as he's going to have to play, and Ken, he might have to. Well, I would say right now for sure, neither one of us are doctors or what have you, but it sure as hell sounds like Case Keenum is going to. That's not the only football game he's going to start at quarterback uh, uh, for the Cleveland Browns this year, huh? Yeah, I guess uh, some kind of cracked bone or whatever it is on top yeah. of uh, you know the shoulder popping out and the torn labrum for Baker Mayfield, as uh, Jay Glazer reported last night before the game. Um, it, it's um, it, it's what is it? October thirty first. Today we're taping this on the twenty second. So nine days from is that bone going to heal in nine days? Uh, you know enough uh, where it's going to keep that shoulder in there and he's going to be able to play uh, at one p.m. on Halloween Day at home against the Steelers. Boy, that I mean, if he recovers that quickly, then I want whatever he's taking uh, mm-hmm. because I got some uh, bones and aches that that uh, need that healing power <laughs> yeah. as well, right? Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, I, I think you might be onto something where he might uh, miss another game or two, um, and if he does, you feel good about Case Keenum stepping in like a Don Strzok did, a Gary Danielson that's did, right. a Kelly Holcomb did, a Brian yeah. Hoyer did, right? All those guys, absolutely, and. And it's the lot of the backup in the National Football League. Like I said, there are many days I'm not sure there's 32 that deserve to be starters anyway, Ken, when we look at uh, some of these football teams and their starting quarterbacks. But, you know, be that as it may, I I do think it's something that, uh, 
this gives the Browns, I think, a little bit of, uh, you know, if you're looking at it just equally in that position, I, I feel that the Browns have a little bit of a leg up on everybody else that, uh, again, the damn thing's just not going to completely get wrecked and fall apart if Keenum's got to go in there and look to win a football game for you. And that's all you can ask for with your backup. Stay functional. Be able to run the offense effectively, put points on the board, hopefully get early leads just like last night, and then, uh, you know what, away you go. Get all your complimentary pieces, and uh, that's how you win. But, uh, I, Kenny, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to at all say, let's say Keenum does have to quarterback, you know, whether it's two, three, four, five, who knows? Uh, I'm all, I feel good. I think this team can still realize exactly everything that they were hoping to do. Now, you know, you want to get some of these other pieces back, obviously, right? Right. But uh, I think uh, I think Case Keenum is uh, is 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 the guy and the kind of guy that's not going to let it fall apart, and uh, that's that's huge for the Browns right now. The Red Guy and Rota podcast brought to you by MGM Northfield Park. And uh, we want to remind everybody what's going on there at Northfield Park. Uh, big time. The Breeders' Cup World Championships are Friday and Saturday, November 5th and 6th. Visit Northfield Park to watch and wager on the exciting racing action from Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. And get back to our the, the game last night, uh, Michael. Uh, 10 nothing at halftime. Huge for them to take a 10-point lead into halftime, but I thought it was even bigger too, Michael, that they held the Broncos off the board. Denver had to go in and really make some adjustments to come out in the second half if they were going to make a game of this, and they did. We'll get to that later. But I thought the defense, after two very poor weeks, okay, very disastrous weeks, let's say it uh, how it really was, uh, stepped up against a bad offense with an yeah. injured quarterback and did what they should do, just like Case Keenum did what he was supposed to do, right? The the defense pitched a shutout in the first half, and that, along with double digits in, in points, I thought that was huge for them confidence-wise going into the locker room. Without question. Enormous for them to be able to – because you just said it, Ken, the last couple of weeks. I mean, uh, I don't even want to go back and look at how many points and how many yards and how many third and longs they gave up, but – they got their butts torched these last couple of weeks. And again, yep. certainly, yes, were they by quarterbacks of a greater acumen than Teddy Bridgewater? Okay, that's fine. But they got torched, and they needed a, a regroup and a regather and to get themselves back where, you know, Kenny, so much about football, and you and I have talked about this down through the years. I mean, you know, so much of it is is the factor of – feeling good about where you are as whether it's a unit or a position group or, you know, just an individual player feeling good about where you are, getting, having some confidence and having something that's a positive for you that you take and hopefully, you know, uh, start stacking up going forward. Look, Brown's defense sure as hell needed that last night because, uh, yeah, the last two weeks were just just uh, not, not acceptable, quite frankly. All right? I, I just don't think they were acceptable. That's not how a winning team is uh, is going to get themselves to where they want to be. So, uh, yes, it was good to see. It doesn't matter whom it was against. And, I mean, people are going to say, wow, it wasn't against, you know, Justin Herbert, right? So, I mean, but you know what, again, um, hey, uh, you got to play who's lined up against you. And, I, actually, I thought they might even – come after uh, Bridgewater a little bit more than they did, but Joe Woods didn't really do a lot of blitzing against them. But uh, as you said, the uh, getting the 10-0 lead was critical last night, critical. I, I do think the defense, I think it helped the defense, and they played off that, Kenny, and, and played one of their better overall football games as a unit this year. Yeah, for me, Reg, here's how I'm looking at it. Last night, it didn't matter who they were playing. They needed to get a win in the defense. Uh, needed to play better, and they did, okay? As I step back and look at it, yeah, Denver's not a good football team. They've lost four straight, but if you go and check their schedule, go, go and look uh, at who they beat. They didn't beat anybody, right? So this is a bad football team. Was it two, to, sorry, two, not to interrupt you, but two, the two New York teams in uh, Urban Jackson. Meyer's mess, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Those are their three wins? Yeah. Yeah, those well, are their know, three wins. It took advantage okay. of their schedule. Okay, right, yeah. they did. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. No, they're not. They're not any special football team whatsoever. 
Right. So they're going to fall into the spot where they probably should, which is last place, you know, in that division. OK, having said that, like, you know, you, you got to beat them. Do I know what this Browns defense is yet? No, I don't, because it hasn't happened against the the Patrick Mahomes, the Justin Herberts uh, and, and the uh, Kyler Murrays. Uh, next week, it, it's the Steelers on Halloween Day, one o'clock. You know, that team is three and three again. They're not a very good football team, in my opinion, okay? Uh, but they've gotten a little bit better, and we'll see uh, how good both teams are. I think that's a really good matchup. We're going to find out which of these two teams in the AFC North, when they go head-to-head on October 31st, uh, is better than the other and has a chance to maybe challenge, dare I say, the Bengals, who are in second place right now, and the top dog right now, uh, the Baltimore Ravens. So, I still don't – I know what this offense is. This is a running offense mm-hmm. that will throw off the run, right? So whoever you plug in there, whether it's Nick Chubb, whether it's Kareem Hunt, the Ernest Johnson, Demetrius Felton, Michael Redguy, Kenny Rhoda, we can all run for 100 yards <laughs> oh, with oh, the way oh. they run the football, Reg. Okay? <laughs> right? So I know that that's what the, the identity of the offense is. Run the ball, throw off of the run. Uh, and uh, they're going to score some points. Defensively, I still don't know. I've got Jadavian Clowney, and I've got uh, Miles Garrett, who have been fairly consistent throughout the year as the only two consistent players when they've both been in there at the same time on the entire defense. It was nice to see John Johnson get an interception and make a play in the end zone yesterday. So I need to see more consistency out of the defense moving forward because I feel – that I know what this offense is. Is that a fair assessment or no? No, it's a very, very fair assessment because, uh, yeah, we, we we know how Kevin Stefanski wants to operate offensively. No question about that. So, um, you know, to me, Kenny, I've always felt, I think we talked about this, you know, um, until you have these type of situations that did come up against Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray and, uh, and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, you know, uh, you don't really know what you're looking at and what you're going to get because Andrew Barry made a few, uh, you know, a few necessary changes defensively, right, with his personnel this year. But uh, you know, for me, uh, I, I felt that defensively, again, this is this is feeling feeling good about the offense is uh, is the way it should have been. They they gave us that a year ago coming into this season, and they gave us the fact that now with a year of uh, continuity and a year of uh, uh, continuing to play together, it was going to continue to be a uh, the strong st- piece, the strength of the football team. But, you know, Kenny, defensively, uh, yeah, it's it's not been exactly what you uh, what you would want. But let's hope that, uh, you know, uh, there's there, I, you got to like things they did last night. I mean, again, it doesn't matter who you're playing. They they held Denver to 41 yards rushing, I believe. Right. I think Bridgewater and his offense only put together a little bit over right around 220 total yards. So, but as you said, and I know that you're going to get to now, you know, the second half after the 10 nothing lead, uh, they did put a couple of drives together, long drives, and, uh, you know, uh, Denver had got points on the board. But hey, look, I mean, it's the NFL. You're not going to shut people out every week. But the thing is, is that uh, I think we can agree this Browns defense has uh, not only got to continue to stack them up the good the good performances but improve as well and uh, be a conduit to what we hope this offense can keep doing and that is you know you, this is how you're going to have to you might get into some shootouts but you're going to have to find ways to in fourth quarters secure the game and I think that's more going to be on the defensive side Kenny than the offensive side if the offense going to have leads for you can the defense get them secured Reds, let's get a break in right now. We'll come back. We'll take a look at the second half of the game between the Broncos and the Browns. Get our thoughts on how big of a win this is for Cleveland and then peek ahead uh, at that Steelers game and beyond with the Browns uh, improving to 4-3 and three on the season with that 17-14 win over the Broncos. Stay tuned. More of the r r podcast powered by MGM Northfield Park coming your way next. Hey, the Roadman, Kenny Rhoda here for MGM Northfield Park, and Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. 
Catch the excitement of live harness racing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday evening. Post time is 6 p.m. Open early every day for that simulcast action. And check this out, weekly Sunday handicapping contest featuring Belmont Park, the top prize each week, $500. Registration for that begins at 11 a.m. And put this on your calendar. The Breeders' Cup World Championships are Friday and Saturday, November 5th and 6th. Visit Northfield Park to watch and wager on the exciting racing action from Del Mar Thoroughbred Club. Free admission and free parking every day at Northfield Park. Hey, I'm Jason. And I'm Gary. And And we we love love ball cards. And if you love ball cards too, good news. You just found your new favorite podcast. From breaks to grading. And from collecting to flipping, join us on the Ball Cards Show. The sports podcast for the sports collector. Hey everyone, it's JD from the Hyman Podcast. Back by popular demand, I'm excited to let you know that new episodes of the Hyman Podcast will drop every other Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. We're going to continue the conversations we started last season and keep having those hard conversations. There is so much in store for you this season, and I'm excited to share it with you. Subscribe today so you don't miss a single moment. The Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. For the Dennis Maniloff Show, I'll tap into my 40-plus years of following Cleveland sports and 30-plus years of writing and talking about them so as to bring you informed opinions and analysis of your favorite players and teams. I also will monitor the national sports scene and, when warranted, step out of the toy department and into the real world. And I'll always be on the lookout for special guests. By all means, join us. And we continue with the r r podcast. Kenny Roto along with Michael Regai taking a look back at the Browns' win over the Broncos 17-14 on national TV. Thursday night football in C-Town. The crowd showed up. The Browns showed up. They get the win. And, Michael, um... They had a 10 nothing lead at halftime, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking, you know what? Denver's not going to score a point. They're, they're, they're going to be lucky to get in the end zone or even a field goal uh, in this game, and, and I've got to give them some credit. They made some halftime adjustments and made a game of this. At any point last night as you were watching this, though, did you feel concerned that uh, this was going to melt down and on national TV after leading 10 nothing at halftime, the Browns were, were going to blow this game? No, I really wasn't, Kenny. I, I, you know, I thought because it was uh, they'd established the way they were running the football, and I thought uh, that that was going to hold them uh, together. To be sure, now when you know it, uh, you have a possibility of maybe in the fourth quarter that uh, you say, "All right, well, Denver can uh, you know get in the field goal range and maybe tie this thing up, right, and send it into overtime." But uh, but no, I mean, I, I didn't feel like it was a game that uh, was going to be lost. And again, but most specifically there for, uh, for me, it was nice to see the defense uh, continue to, uh, you know, like you said, they, what, what did Denver put up? 14 in the second half, right? Yeah. A couple of TDs. Yeah, one in the third quarter and one in the fourth quarter. But uh, the Dearness Johnson uh, emergence last night was, Kenny, that was uh, – that young man runs hard, man. He runs hard and he takes hits. And uh, what he did last night with 146 yards was, I think, above and beyond what anybody uh, could have expected or thought or uh, how he was going to uh, shape the course of that game for the Browns. It was special. It really was. He made himself some money last night, didn't he, Reg? Uh, I'd say so. Yeah. After yeah. that performance, granted, the Browns, are the best running team in the NFL, and then they have a, a great offensive line when everybody's healthy, but even banged up, they're pretty good, as we saw. So uh, he took advantage of that, and I think he made himself some money because if he's the third string uh, running back here, there are uh, you know, NFL teams around the league that are looking at and go, he's better than our number one. We got we to see yes. uh, what's up with him in, in the offseason yes. in free agency. So uh, good for him. Great story. He's on a fishing boat not too long ago, right? And he yeah. ends up uh, wanting to play in the NFL, and uh, he gets the chance, and he waits his turn, waits his turn. And uh, what are the odds that both Chubb and, and Hunter are going to go down mm-hmm. uh, in uh, you know the same week, in the same season, let alone? And uh, it happened. And you talk about a guy stepping in, doing his job, uh, and being prepared. Uh, that's what you need. And give yeah. Andrew Barry credit. 
uh, for the depth that, that he built at that running back position because Dearness Johnson, I, I'll say it right now, he's the best third string running back in the NFL. So <laughs> yeah. kudos to him. Yeah, you may have the uh, certainly right there at the top range, right, the top level of the best backup quarterbacks in the National mm-hmm. Football League. Or, again, at least one of them that's not going to have your whole damn system fall apart if he's got to play, as we discussed in our in our first segment here yep. uh, with Case Keenan. But, yeah, I, well, you know what it might do, Kenny? And, again, this is a – this is, but this is what we do, right? This is a story for another day. But uh, Andrew Barry, yes, a very astute uh, selection of uh, Dearness Johnson. And now you wonder, though, going forward, and I would say, could it be Kareem Hunt that is affected if the thought is is that Johnson uh, should and could be the guy that is uh, is Nick Chubb's uh, number one A? You don't know, okay. uh, yeah. but it, I think it's something that I. Try, I I got to believe that it's something that, uh, you know, that Andrew Barry will take a, a long, hard look at as this year goes on. All right. So Denver comes out, makes a game of it, 10 to 7, right? They, they go yeah. down, they score in the third quarter. It's 10 to 7. Probably the most important drive of the game then is the Browns responding, Michael Regai. And, and be honest with me here. Were you saying kick the damn field goal uh, <laughs> at fourth and three? <laughs> At the uh, six-yard uh, line there with your backup yeah. quarterback in, your backup running back in, your backup right tackle in the game yep. there. Were you saying kick no. the field goal or were you saying, all right, uh, you've gone for it all year, you better be true to yeah. yourself. What What was uh, Michael Reg, I think, at that point in the third <laughs> no, I, quarter? I appreciate you thinking about me then. Yeah, because I was. I, no, I did not. No, I was with that. At 100% with it. Okay. Again, my, my thing, I, I won't spend too much time on it, but – to me, in in the first quarter, Kenny, which Stefanski has done twice now, first mm-hmm. quarter, you got a lot of football left. Your team's behind. Take the field goal. Put the points on the board. Even your team out. Get them feeling leveled. Okay, big difference. No, I was all for that, continuing to absolutely. Let's keep the offense on the football field because – I mean, a, a field goal there, I mean, you, you, you still don't have it as a two-possession game, do you? So, nope. I mean, nope. Uh, the first quarter, different story. Fourth quarter, momentum, keep it going, absolutely. Absolutely like that, uh, like that, that say, hey, well, keep the offense on for, let's go. Let's stick this thing in the end zone. Yeah, I here are the two thoughts I had. Number one is Reg I saying kick the damn field goal. That's <laughs> no, a, seriously. I was at I was at Jersey's last night with the Star County uh, Browns backers, and I'm like, is Michael screaming at the TV? Because there were people at Jersey saying take the field goal, Reg. Really? Right? Yeah. So there were Browns fans, Browns backers saying take the field goal. But the other thought that was going through my head is, all right, prove to us that this is who you really are, because. Uh, if you've gone for it up to this point uh, in the season, if that's what mm-hmm. the analytics tell you, if that's what your co- coaching philosophy and belief is, then mm-hmm. you better go for it here, even though it's the backup quarterback. Yeah. And uh, I was um, happy that they went for it there. Here's why. And you pointed this out. They were in front. OK, they had the lead. Yes. And even if you don't get it there, you have forced Denver to go 94 yards to try and tie the game or take the lead. And there's plenty of time left, right? So when you're ahead, when it's even or you're ahead, I don't have Mm -hmm. the problems. Uh, When you're behind early or it's 0-0 early, I want the points and I want to play from in front. But I was happy to see Kevin Stefanski be true to who he's been all season. He went for it there. Uh, I think it was fourth and three from the six. It was three, yeah. Yeah. And And they they got the, I mean, Case Keenum with a nice scramble. Uh, extra effort dives uh, and makes the play. They get, uh, you know, first and goal, and then they throw the touchdown pass to Stanton, and the lead goes from 10 to 7. And instead of 13 to 7, now it's 17 to 7. And at that point, Michael, I said, Browns will not lose this game. That to me was the game changing decision and the game changing and deciding drive. And again, I'm all for it. And, and just to wind it up, so you know, if people want to continue that. Again, to me, there's a huge difference between early in a football game in the first quarter and yeah. in a fourth quarter, even the second half. That's a huge difference. And if you say it isn't, I'm sorry, I I'll never be with you on that because uh, you know, early I want the point. I'm kidding. I'm gonna tell you almost 100 percent of the time. You give me that in the first quarter, I'm yeah. taking the points, especially when I'm behind. 
especially when I'm behind, maybe even in the first half, because you got a lot of football to play. Now, fourth quarter, so that's a whole different story. That this isn't even the same. Uh, it isn't even the same conversation, Ken. To me, right. fourth and three, fourth and four. First quarter, you're in the uh, red zone. I'm taking the points. Yes. Fourth quarter, no. It's not even. It's not even. It doesn't equate. Not the same conversation. But you know, a hey, uh, Case Keenum. I mean, you know, the, the, <laughs> Kenny when he when he pulled that down and started uh, lowering his shoulder and heading to the end zone. I'm like, wow, man. This dude, this dude's a gamer. He's a big time football player because he knows he's going to get rocked. He knows he is, and you know. But uh, it's uh, uh, he's been in that situation a lot before, and that's why I uh, I still feel good because I I think with him there with he's how much he's got to play, and again we don't know we don't know. But as we sit here, I'll just say I'd be very surprised if he's not starting another couple of football games for this team before this year is out, and so feel good about having him. that drive Michael red guy is uh, I'm looking at it right here to answer the Broncos drive uh, 13 plays 75 yards and it took up seven minutes and 21 mm. seconds off the clock gave the defense a rest right yeah. uh, you chew up yards and you increase your lead so to me like I said that that was the the drive of the game for the Cleveland Browns um, they forced Denver to punt on their very next possession got the ball back um, ran a couple of minutes off the clock again and then gave Denver the opportunity. Uh, and, and here's what I want to give the defense credit for, Michael. Uh, you're up 17-7, to and yes, Denver makes it 17-14, but they made the Broncos run 17 plays to go 80 yards and chew up over six minutes of the clock. They didn't give up the big strike, right? You and I weren't saying, what the hell's going on with the secondary? Why is that guy so wide open in the damn end zone and nobody's around him, right? Yeah. They shored yeah. up the communication problems defensively in that secondary, kept everything in front of them, and made Denver work and earn every yard and every point of that drive. And then in turn, what that did was it shortened the game, which you mm -hmm. wanted. And mm -hmm. you were then able to run out the clock on your very next possession. So credit the defense, Joe Woods, for changing some things, getting the guys to communicate better. Uh, and even though they gave up seven, uh, it was, uh, in a strange way to say it, it was a good seven points that they gave up because uh, it took so much time for Denver. Yeah, you just laid it out again. When you, uh, what you can't have there, Kenny, is uh, is having that uh, that couple of chunk plays and that explosion play, and all of a sudden on four plays in a minute and forty seconds, your opponent's in the end zone. Now you may be, you know, you got still a, a bulk of a fourth quarter to play. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, that was not that big a deal that uh, it ultimately turned into a Denver touchdown. Because, you know, the Browns uh, for giving up the TD, that's exactly the way you want it when you got that kind of, when you got a 10 point lead, you know, make them go 80 yards, you know, make them at least a dozen to 15 plays. Hell, it was 17, as you said, and seven and a half minutes off the clock. Well, that plays big time into the team that's uh, maintaining the lead. So, yeah, it was, uh, listen, uh, no complaints with the Browns defensively last night for me. I, I would have went after Bridgewater and blitzed them a little bit more and showed them some, you know, some different, uh, some looks in terms of sending sending numbers at him. But, I mean, hey, listen, uh, you know, Woods, uh, <laughs> Woods put together the formula that won him a football game, and he, he his boys only gave up 14 points. So, you know, we, we have to take that as a win-win a for them. All right, so they run the clock out. The Ernest Johnson, some nice running, able to genuflect and get out with a 17-14 win, Michael Regai. Put into perspective, how big of a win was this for the Browns in a game that I called, Reg, the last time we were talking, a must-win for yes, the Cleveland Browns? Yes, you did, Kenny yeah. Roden. You called it a must-win. That's right. Um, you know, I, I certainly understand what you meant by that. Uh you hate to do it in game seven of a 17 game season, but I, I completely understand. A lot of people felt that way. And, uh, Kenny, I, 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 I'm not going to tell you yesterday. I, I was doing a lot of thinking about it and said, okay, what if on Friday morning we all wake up and they're now three and four and not in a real good situation with, uh, with what it would, with 10 games to go. Right. So, 
Kenny, it's 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 just uh, enormous. I mean, it keeps you above five hundred. It yep. keeps you where you can say to yourself, like, hey, you know what? We're we're going to go now. We're gonna we got a shot to win the division, which they do. I mean, although you know, you pro honestly, you're probably going to have to beat Baltimore twice yep. to be able to do that, right? And yep. probably, uh, but we'll, we'll deal with that going forth. To me, being four and three right now, Kenny. I mean. You know, if we looked at it, even without all this stuff, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of had them probably at five and two, no better than that uh, at this positioning. I don't know about you. Did you were you in that kind of that that range five, two, four, and three right now? I know I, I didn't think there were before it happened. I didn't think they were going to beat the LA Chargers and uh, the one that uh, the way Arizona's played. Okay, I thought that that'd be a home win. I did. Right. But, me too. Um, yep. So. Uh, but now, you know, Kyler Murray and that group came out of the gates like uh, mad men. And uh, so, but Kenny, I thought five and two and maybe four and three, and that's what they are. So here we go. Let's go. Buckle up and let's go. Let's go play. You are who or you are what your record <laughs> says you are, right? Thank you, Coach Parcells. Yes. Uh, and Kevin <laughs> yeah. Stefanski said last week after that's three right. and three, we're an average football team. That's we're right. three and three, right? I'm and glad he, he right. said that. I'm yep. glad he said that because he's right. At, at yep. four, when he said it on Monday morning, that's exactly like three and three. I don't know how you can say, oh, well, you want to start tooting your heart about, oh, we're the best three and three team after six games in the NFL. <laughs> what the hell is that going to get you, man? No, you're an average football team. So good for him. Good for hey, him I'll, that he said it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I got to go back and look at the schedule game. I didn't have them better than five and two. I don't think at okay. this point. So yeah. uh, five and two, four and three, and, and I have them winning the division at eleven and six in a mm, tiebreaker yeah. over the Ravens. So what you said means yeah. they've got to beat Baltimore twice, twice to have that tiebreaker. Yes, and they play them twice in a three week span with that bye week mixed in in week thirteen. I was just looking at the schedule, Reg, and for me it was a must win yesterday, and I think it could be a season changing win. Uh, for them yesterday but up next the Steelers in week eight at Cincy week nine at New England week 10 then you're home against the worst team in the NFL the Detroit Lions um, uh, then yes, you've got they a, are. a game at Baltimore <laughs> the bye week and then Baltimore comes to your place in week 14 so a, a very interesting stretch of games here where they play one two three four t- uh, four times within the division in their next six games and uh, that could shape yes. whether or not they are yeah. AFC North champs or not, Reg. You're yeah, right. And I got to ask Kenny Rota right now because yeah. uh, I'm kind of like, well, I do because, uh, you know, you know, I think you do too. I've always liked Joe Burrow. Uh, yeah. I've known his dad forever and ever and ever and uh, very happy for the young man's success. Um, if you had to lay all of that Kenny Rota fortune on it right now, right yeah. now, can the Cleveland Browns beat Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals twice? This year, um, I don't know if they'll beat them twice. I think they can afford to split with them as long as they beat the Steelers and Ravens twice. Okay, mm-hmm. so I I think they they can. So you're uh, thinking you know, five and one maybe in the five, division. I I think you have to go five and one if you want the tiebreaker and, and to win this division. I really okay, do, man. That's I not... I do. I think you got to yeah. go if you want to secure the division because we know Reg. Doesn't matter what your record, overall record is, if you win the division. You win the division, you're not a wild card team. You're a right. playoff team with a home game, and that's what matters. So for me, the six most important games this season for the Browns are the six within the division, and and, yeah. and win, you know, win that, uh, uh, you know, have that tiebreaker, have that edge. Yes, the overall record determines, uh, you know, who wins the division. Okay, yes. how many yes. wins do you have totally? But I know what you mean. That tie, and this is the point I'm trying to make. Then, if you went five and one, and everybody else is four and two, or then you get the edge and you win that division. So that, to me, is the most important thing for them moving forward. It is. Boy, if they can go better to better than four and two in this division, I I mean, that'd be loud. I'll be giving them uh, big ups. I mean, that's and this division now again with uh, with you know. I know you're a little bit down on your football team yep. out of the uh, Steel City, but man, I, I'm sorry. I, you know me. I just don't think, man. You go. That's this is not a gimme, man. I mean, you know, Ben could have some kind of, uh, 
you know, holistic uh, regrouping of 2010 or something and throw for 350 and that defense could get flying around and knocking footballs out of people's hands and creating turnovers. So, you know, I feel about going into going yeah. into to Heinz, man. It's like uh, it's like a house of horrors ready to just take you down. So we'll see. We'll see how the Browns handle that going forward. But I again, this this Cincinnati thing where well, I'm going to start watching this more and more because okay. they're getting this, this foot, that football team's getting better. Kenny, I know well, Browns fans don't want to, but Kenny, they are. Yeah. They're getting better and they got the quarterback, too, as and long we'll- as he stays healthy. And we'll find out more about them this weekend, Reg. They're at Baltimore. Right, okay. yes. Cincinnati, That's a big one. At Baltimore. Yep. Ravens are six-and-a-half-point favorites in that one. So we'll see if Cincinnati's for real or, uh, you know, they're looking good but really not uh, the, the real deal because they got blown out twice by the Ravens last year and did score right. in double digits against You're the right. Ravens last year. So, right. uh, yeah. you know, we'll see if Joe Burrow uh, and Chase – uh, who he's been hooking up with ever since he hooked up with him at LS Go Tiger. Oh, I, I don't have a job. You can't, you can't say that. Go anymore. Tigers, Go Tigers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one team, one hot and no job. Uh, and the Orgeron and, and the Tigers yeah, want it because of that combination. And so uh, that's something I will definitely be watching uh, this mm, weekend. The Steelers too. have a bye this weekend. So they're off getting ready for the Browns. Ravens and Bengals head to head. Browns are off until the following Sunday because they played last night. All right, Reg, final thoughts here as we wrap up this edition of the R&R podcast powered by MGM Northfield Park. Feel good about it. Uh, good shape, as we just said. I mean, you know, you're four and three, and uh, Kenny called it a, a must win. I certainly understand it. I didn't go quite that far, but I I, I will give you, you, you know, if it's what we're talking about being three and four this morning, which what's coming up, ugh. I'm down with that at all. So feel good about it. You got a backup quarterback that's not going to let the damn thing just completely come unhinged. He's right. going to be able to keep the offense together. And can he just defensively? Boy, I don't know. I don't got a lot of faith in Joe Woods, but if he can continue to just make strides with that defense, I think it's going to be very important that uh, that they they can start to create a lot of different types of looks. You know, with their coverages and how they get after quarterbacks, too. That's going to be helpful. But uh, it's good to have these 10 days off for the Browns. Hopefully some of these, good, some of these men get back together and can play. Uh, that's going to be key going forward. But, uh, hey, all in all, four and three coming off a Thursday night win with a mini bye. you got to feel good about that. I want to give a shout-out before I forget to Jarvis Landry. We haven't mentioned yes. him uh, hardly at Jeez. all. He was a huge spark for this offense last night when you look at his numbers you go Roman what the hell are you talking about? I had five catches for 37 yards that's that's not a big night it was a big night because getting him back um, helped that offense sustain drives he's a chain mover he moves the chains he gets you those first downs the, the sure hands Odell Beckham Jr. dropped two more last night uh, mm-hmm. you know in the game yeah did he catch one uh, yeah he caught two for 23 Odell but the five catches for 37 yards from Jarvis Landry, and he left late in the game. Hopefully it's nothing serious. I heard it wasn't, so we'll have to wait and see. He gets the 10 days off now, too. But getting him back in that offense was big for them. It gave them a spark. He's their emotional leader, I think, uh, on offense. So getting him back, Juice Landry back, uh, did give the team some juice. So kudos there. And, Michael, tell you what, if we would have woke up, Talking about the Browns at three and four, and Baker Mayfield with a cracked bone in his shoulder, uh, and the running backs both out, and Conklin, you don't know when he's coming back, and the defense blew another lead, and all that today, the the world would be ending. People would be at the I four eighty bridge, right? Uh, yep. But that's why I think last night was a must win, and it may be that season turning win for the Cleveland Browns because four and three is a hell of a lot better. Mm-hmm at three and four with all those other things uh, that I mentioned right there. You got that right. And uh, it's, it's something that hopefully they can build on now, but it'd be good to, you know, you know winning teams can, they're going to need to stack together three wins in a row, yep. four wins in a row, go four and one in a five game span. So um, yeah, we'll see if the football gods are uh, smiling on them. I do hope, I, I think we all hope that they, they get healthy and they have uh you know, those guys that are prime time guys that they've got uh, down, hopefully they can get back in and uh, 
make that a reality, what we're talking about, so they can, uh, you know, can he maybe be, who knows, maybe let's say be 8-4 and four after 12. What do you think about that? 8-4, and four, that's winning four the next five. That, that uh, would be good. Nothing's that easy. Yeah. That, would, that would be real good. Yeah, yeah it, it really no would. And if they can put three wins in a row, Michael, you know what that is? That's a winning streak, fellas. <laughs> yes, around, it is, right? manager. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, try and put uh, a winning streak yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So uh, no we'll see how that plays out. Uh, again, their next game, October 31st uh, against the Steelers. And coming up on uh, the next few editions of the r r podcast, besides, you know, Browns postgame stuff, Cavaliers have started their season, Michael. We got to get into that. Yep. Uh, we got to get into the 75 greatest players that they just announced over the last three years yep. uh, in the NBA. And who knows, maybe they'll bring uh, the – the living members of that group to Cleveland for the All-Star Game in February. So you and I love the hoops, and we're going to talk some Cavs and NBA basketball coming up in some of these midweek podcasts as well. Look forward to it, Kenny. Can't wait, man. Always fun checking in with you, Reds. That's you this edition it. of the r r Podcast brought to you by MGM Northfield Park. Thanks to Dave Emmert for what he does, making sure you all can hear this in the podcastosphere and stay tuned for the next edition of the R&R podcast coming your way soon.